Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Woodlands, Texas, for Texas high school football on Bike Sports. I'm Chris Martin, joined by Adam Euler, and tonight we have the Woodlands Christian Academy Warriors playing host to the Broncos of Bay Area Christian. Both teams coming in undefeated. Uh, the Warriors are three and zero. Bay Area Christian coming in at 4-0. The Warriors are coming off a bye week. Both of these are tap schools, and they have a long history of playing one another. This is the 11th meeting between these two teams. The series is tied at five wins apiece. You can see the captains meeting at midfield right now. And after the coin toss, the Broncos appear to have, have won the toss and deferred, so it will be the offense of TWCA coming onto the field the for the first time. Won the toss and deferred the second half. It'll be the Warriors receiving the ball first. Now the Warriors are playing their first home game of the season. That's right, even though the calendar turned to fall this week, they have not played any pre-autumnal home games. So home fans here in Warrior Nation, very happy to be at home and see the home opener for their Warriors. And likewise, this is the Broncos' first true road game. They played four games, but one at a neutral site, and the last three have been at home. So they have got to adjust to a game on the road. Woodlands Christian Academy coached by Chris McClanahan. It's his first season at the helm of the Warriors. He replaces Randy Hollis, who coached the last four years. He's now the athletic director here at TWCA. On the other side, Les Rainey is at the helm in his sixth season of the head coach at Bay Area Christian. He's 34 and 25, and his last four seasons have been winning ones. Two undefeated teams squaring off. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the key points to the game as we start things. Bay Area Christian's kicker is also their starting quarterback, Adam Atwell. Back deep to receive is Rorick Hawkins, the prime kick returner for the Warriors. It's a very prolific offense for TWCA, as we'll talk about as we get into it. They've scored in 11 of the 12 quarters they have played thus far this season. Atwell comes up. It's a low liner, and it will be taken at the three-yard line by Hawkins at the 20 with blockers in front of him. Has a hole at the 40. He's got to fake out the kicker at the 50. At the 45 and caught from behind at about the 42-yard line. 55-yard return for Warwick Hawkins, and he's finally brought down from behind by Andrew Boyd. Well, wow, that's what a great way to start the game, and I, I, there were great blocking up front. There was lots of space for him to run into. He wasn't even touched till he got, I think, to midfield and sets up a great field position for the Warriors. Josh Johnson brings him in. We'll meet the starting lineup after this play. Hawkins stands to his right. Heavy formation to the left. They spot it at the 40-yard line as they look to the sideline for the play. Receiver split either side. Looks into the flat. Flag flies as pass caught by Xavier Richmond. Going to be a four-yard gain. While we look at the flag, let's meet the starting offensive line. Max Abernathy at left tackle. Colby Schilling at left guard. Colby Gorman is the center. Keller Davis is the, the junior right guard. J.C. Lopez gets the start at right tackle. Josh Johnson, as he said, the junior quarterback. Laura Hawkins starting running back. And they're going to call illegal procedure against the Warriors. Ryan Leslie is the other running back. We'll also see Cole Ferris lining up at wide out, and Sebastian Ringelson is the halfback. So already five yards marching backward for the Warriors. Yeah, maybe some a little bit of excitement, first home game, some jitters there just went a little bit early. Yeah, I think they called it as an illegal formation. Jack Van Til is in the backfield next to Hawkins on first and 15. In the pistol formation, and it's going to be Johnson on the left side. Nice block. Great stutter step across the 35 and finally dragged down at around the 34-yard line for a pickup of 13 yards. Josh Johnson, he's a kind of a running quarterback, averaging over six yards a carry. That's his 40th carry. He had 241 yards coming in for the season, and it's going to bring up second down and short. Yeah, it's a good run by Johnson. I think that sort of negates the, the penalty on first down there. It's got an easy second and short here. 
Griggle sends the halfback right side, going in motion across the formation. It's Kai Parker who's now in there. Now they stack two receivers to the right on second down and three. And Johnson gives to Hawkins right side. Nice hole again, first down, 25. Tackled at the 21-yard line by Moses Trevino. So two impressive runs, and the Warriors are knocking on the door of the red zone. Yeah, again, those, those big boys up front create a big hole. It was easy yardage. That was good for 11 yards. Hawkins comes into the game averaging 8.7 yards a carry. 330 rush yards on 38 carries. Also has five touchdowns. Heavy rush team and probably even heavier tonight. On first down, Hawkins on the lead again. Left side with a big crease. 15 yard line down to the 14. He hits the hole so quickly and picks up nine quick yards. Yeah, I mean, again, he's... It's almost like he's run six yards before anybody's touching him, and he's already into the secondary before uh, before he's hit. Got to give credit to the offensive line with the good push. Mm -hmm. So far, the Broncos defense doesn't have an answer. Second down, call it two. Warriors in the red zone on the initial drive of the game. They like that stacked pistol formation. And again, it's Hawkins. And he gets close to the marker, but he's not going to get it. They're going to... Spot him short and go for a no gain as Rylan D, the no defensive end, down. makes the tackle. Actually, gave him a loss of a yard. Yeah, it's much better from the linebackers up there, sort of reading the run. It's happened a few times third now, and got a third down here. Maybe he can make a stop. Let's see what Coach McClanahan has on third down and three. This time, Leslie is in the backfield as well. Hawkins dots the eye. Ringelson, the receiver near side. Okay, they fake it. Option play. Nice toss to Warwick Hawkins. First down at the 10-yard line, and he runs over Smith Nave, who is the cornerback on that side. It'll bring up first and goal. That's the first time we've seen the option. Yeah, that's great. A great play calling there. Sort of the counter movement up out into the option. Plenty of room on that left side, and he got the first down. They're going to have to go the full 10 on this first and goal. First and goal for the Warriors, it's 10 yard line. This time they're going to split out Van Til to the right and Cole Ferris split out to the left. Same running back formation for Johnson. Give us to Leslie right side, has to cut it up. We'll stick it in the five and down to the three yard line. A nice job by Leslie to put his foot in the ground and get inside the five. And now the, the jumbo package of sorts comes in for TWCA. Yeah, again, good good running play, a little bit of misdirection, and they're right on the doorstep. Talked about the passing problems, which probably won't be an issue down here, but so many of the receiving core of TWCA is out tonight. They're in street clothes. We'll talk more about that as they go full house backfield on second and goal. They give it to the big jumbo man, and he gets to the one-yard line. That's big Elijah Tokabens, <laughs> an offensive lineman, TWCA's version of the fridge. He didn't get the touchdown, but he got them three feet away, third and goal. Yeah, when you see number 90 sort of driving through the middle, it's <laughs> you know it must be the jumbo. We'll see if they give it back to Tokabens, or perhaps they'll give it to one of the running backs. And let Tokabens follow, third down and goal from the one. Full house again, it's the big guy, and he gets into the end zone, I think. No signal yet. No, he's short. I thought he fell forward. Elijah Tokabens gained ground, but it's now fourth and a foot, and obviously Coach McClanahan's going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, this would be a huge stop for the Broncos if they could stop the Warriors right here on, what are we, at the one-yard one line here? Inside the one-fourth and goal. Let's see if they try a sneak with Johnson. That's the just good. Nope, they're going to give it to him. Touchdown. Great push Touchdown. that time. First time, second time, third time's the charm for Elijah Tokabins, his first touchdown run. It took him three carries to get three yards, but he doesn't care. He's got the touchdown. And the Warriors score on their opening drive. Yeah, no need to overcomplicate things. Just hand it off to the big fella, and he uh, made it work. So now Bruno Bobato, the junior kicker, comes in to try the extra point. He's 13 of 15. The PATs thus far this season. Puts his foot into it, low liner. No good, missed it. 
So with 6.54 left to play in the game in the first quarter, it's now 12 of 13 quarters that the Warriors have scored in 2021. They lead 6-0 over Bay Area Christian, who will get the ball for the first time on the ensuing kickoff. Promotes school spirit and provides support to the athletic and fine arts programs to enhance the experience for their students. Join Warrior Boosters today to support their Warrior athletes at TWCA.net slash boosters. A variety of levels are available that will get you into all the home games for free. So because of the kick return by Rorick Hawkins, it was only a 40-yard drive. But still, it took four minutes, 56 seconds, all runs, no passes. And to complete the thought about the passing game of the offense, there are a total of five players, receivers, who are out today in street clothes. Plays Hensey, Keaton Harvey, Gio Awasom, Jack Cole, and Blake Wiley. They account for 78% of the receptions thus far this season for the Warriors and all five of the touchdown receptions. So this is a run-heavy team coming in anyway, averaging about 296 yards per game. But you would have to imagine that Johnson's not going to throw the football as much as he even did in the first few Yeah, you don't hear that a lot, that, that many inactive receivers. But looks like, at least in the first drive, they made that run game work from, uh, from a few backs. And they did switch it up, and they did get into the end zone. Jacob Rios standing at the five-yard line. Back deep to receive for the Broncos. Bobato with six touchbacks on the season. Puts his foot into it, and that will go into the end zone and going to be returned by the up man. Going to take it out after hesitation, and he's going to be stopped at the nine-yard line. That's Matthew Anderson, who probably should have taken a knee, and he doesn't get back to his own 10. Mm, yeah, maybe, again, maybe a little early game excitement there. Maybe the smart move, as you said, just take the knee, but uh, now the Broncos starting on the back foot here. Let's see what they can do. So now a great spot for the Warriors' defense. We'll meet them after this play, as they have Bay Area Christian, also a very prolific offensive team with their sn first snap from scrimmage. Adam Atwell, as we said, is the quarterback. I hope he's got two running backs behind him. It's a sweep to smith Nave left side, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage for a short game, only a couple yards. He's dragged down by Ezekiel Gerardo, the defensive tackle. He's joined by Elijah Tokabens, who's the starting defensive tackle and the man with the touchdown thus far. <laughs> Grayson Ellisor is the nose guard. Inside backers are Sean Kane and Austin Belikins, Ryan Leslie and Max Olivier are the outside linebackers. Cornerbacks are Xavier Richmond and Daniel Benkovics. Jacob Rios is the free safety. Derek Felder is the strong safety. Second down, call it nine for Bay Area Christian. This time it's a flea flicker throwing over the middle. Man is behind the wrist behind the defense and it falls incomplete. Pass intended for Ethan Mann, and Mann had a step on Derek Felder, the strong safety. A little trickery on the second play from scrimmage for Bay Area. Yeah, that's early in the game to sort of bring in that that kind of wild play calling, but he did have a step, as you said, and it was almost there just a yard out in front of the receiver. Yeah, if Atwell puts it on the mark, it could be six. It's mm -hmm. definitely a gain into Warrior territory. So now Matthew Anderson splits out wide left. And Nave goes in motion and a timeout going to be called as the play clock was down to five seconds. So Coach Rainey wants to call a timeout on this important third and nine. Did you know that funds from Warrior Boosters made it possible to complete the brand new boys and girls locker rooms? Join Warrior Boosters today to support Warrior athletes at TWCA.net slash boosters. A little bit more about the Broncos. We said they're coming in 4-0. It's their first road game. They're averaging 30 points a game on offense and pretty good defense, too, averaging just eight and a half points given up. And uh, they've actually won two out of three games in this series, the last two out of three. These two teams in the TAPS rankings very close. TWCA is ranked 19th, and Bay Area Christian is ranked 23rd. Of course, they're in different divisions, two and three. As the teams return to the field, TWCA could get a three and out defensive stop if they can hold Bay Area on third and nine. We'll see if Atwell puts it up in the air. 
6.08 remaining in the opening period. Warriors on top, 6-0. Third down and nine for the Broncos. Rolling out left in the end zone is Atwell looking long. One-on-one, -on -one, knocked away, no flag. Bay Area coaches wanted a flag, but pass falls incomplete, and that's great defensive work by the free safety, Jacob Rios. Really an athletic play there by the quarterback, Atwell, and he made a good attempt at it. And I don't know, it didn't look like the cornerback had his head turned, but refs don't throw the flag. They are going to say it really wasn't contact. You can face guard as long as you don't touch him, mm -hmm. and apparently there wasn't enough contact or no contact at all. Matthew Anderson was, again, the intended receiver. So now that's going to put Derek Felder at the 45-yard line of the Broncos. Atwell is also the punter. He stands at his end zone as the receiver split out on fourth and nine. He's going to need a good punt. And that was not a good punt. That went straight up. It's going to bounce just outside the 30. Well, he gets a nice bounce, and it will actually get an excellent roll into TWCA territory. Someone's living right. It will be down at the 44-yard line. So that's going to be a 47-yard punt, but at least half of that was the roll. Right. It, it looked at first he just like he just shanked it, and it was headed straight out of bounds, and it rolled right down the sideline about 30 yards. Uh, and they'll actually start on their own 45, it looks like, instead of on the Broncos 45. Let's give a big hand. So another start drive that starts with good field position for the Warriors. Already up 6-0 with 546 left to play in the first. Hawkins next to Johnson with the receivers split either side. He does look to throw. Quick toss into the flat at midfield. That's caught by number nine, Dane Lamaster. So Lamaster is getting some work at the wide receiver spot. Yeah, keep it simple, just the hitch on that outside and gets the reception five yards on first down. It's a good way to start the drive. Especially with your top receivers out, you want not only the quarterback, but the receivers to run simple routes just to get themselves into the game. And that's good for six in the midfield stripe, second down and four. And they'll give it back. Big hole over there for Hawkins. First down as he bounces outside across the 40, still dragging tacklers. And run out of bounds at the 38-yard line. 12 more yards for Warren Hawkins. Yeah, you could just see it from our angle here, the just gaping hole right on the right side of that offensive line. And he, with great speed, just punches right through it, breaks a few tackles, and first down. Even though the line's getting a good push, Rorick Hawkins showing a propensity for finding the hole and hitting it quickly, which is just as important. This time, Van Til is in the backfield along with Hawkins in the 37. Play action, and almost an interception as Johnson airmails that hitch route on the right side. Yeah, similar to that first play on this drive, it was a, a hitch on that far side, and it looked like he just airmailed it a little bit, almost picked off with a safety. Matthew Anderson over there got a hand on it. It was a, a foot or two above the intended receiver. It was Cole Ferris. It's so a second down and 10. Second down and 10 for the Warriors. And they go back to the loaded pistol formation. Hawkins behind the three players. Johnson takes the snap, and this time stumbling through the line is Leslie, but getting his feet to the 30, down to about the 28-yard line to the first carry, or rather the second carry for Ryan Leslie, and he's going to make it a third and short. Yeah, he got the speed with Hawkins and then more of the power with Leslie. I mean, he just boulders right through that line and gets a good game. Third down and one. Got nine. Leslie is averaging 9.8 yards a carry. 26 carries coming into the night with 256 yards. Also has three touchdowns. So second and ten becomes third and short for the Warriors. Hawkins alone in the backfield. And he'll get the call. Big hole first down. 25-23 yard line. Finally brought down by Andrew Boyd. Great work by the interior line of the Warriors. Wasn't touched till he had the first. Yeah, you can see it there. That that speed he's got. That first step. The acceleration is so good up the middle, and it's it's hard to stop. Ball spotted at the 23 yard line. 
Clock rolling inside 3.50 to play first quarter. Warriors trying to add to their 6-0 lead. Warrior Stadium does have play clocks in both end zones. 10 second on the play clock. That helps out both quarterbacks. Two receivers to the left side. Johnson play action, looking for another hitch route. Incomplete, and there must have been a mix-up because there were two receivers within two feet of each other, and it went right between them, incomplete. Yeah, again, a little high on the pass, but as you said, the two receivers looked like they were about to collide, so all three defenders could sort of defend the space easy. Maybe a mistake on spacing there. Yeah, so it was better that Johnson kind of overshot everybody. Yeah. Ferris and Ryan Leslie were the receivers. So after completing his first pass, Josh Johnson has bounced his last two. All right, second down for the Warriors. We'll see if Coach McClanahan goes back to the ground game on second and ten. Dribbles the snap, and that's going to be trouble. Brusted play, but Johnson will make something out of nothing as he gets inside the 25, and he'll actually gain yardage. Somehow, Josh Johnson turned a four-yard loss into about a one-yard gain. Yeah, it's good effort. It looked like he'd be out of luck right away there. Maybe a loss of five or six yards, but he just keeps trying. This seems like a theme with these Warriors runners is they just won't go down on that first contact. It was Ty Cappy who was in the backfield and had a couple of hands on Johnson but couldn't bring him down. So now third down and nine. Could be four down territory depending on the result of this play. Hawkins standing next to Johnson. Harris in motion. Play action, where he's looking over the middle, has a man open, and touchdown! Dan, Dane Lemaster. Dane Lemaster, excuse me, has his first touchdown catch of 2021. Are they saying incomplete? Looks like he came down with it, but... So instead of going up 12-0, it's fourth down and nine, and a decision time for Coach McClanahan. Yeah, at least from our angle, you couldn't see if, if he caught the ball. It looked like he did. They had motion across uh, in sort of a misdirection, and he was open in the end zone. It would be a 40-yard field goal attempt, presumably out of Babata's range, so Coach McClanahan will go for it. And he may have to call a timeout. Ten seconds on the play clock. And I think he, he goes over to the official. And they're going to have to call a timeout, and they will. Very important play as the Warriors have to regroup after thinking they had a touchdown. And now Coach McClanahan's got to bring his troops over and try and move the sticks. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to stop by the concession stand. Look at it under the stadium. To pick up your 235 remaining in the first quarter, still 6 0 with the Woodlands Christian Academy leading the Broncos of Bay Area Christian. If you follow TWCA Sports, you know their football program has always been solid. In, this, in 17 years, they've only had two losing seasons. And a couple of seasons where they went 12-1. and one. Two years ago, of course, they went to the state semifinals and lost to the eventual state champion Geneva team. But back in 2014, they were undefeated at 12-0, and, and they lost in the state semifinals to the same Bay Area Christian team. They lost 39 to 14 after having a first quarter lead, I might add. They, they were shut out in the second half of that game. So people who fall, follow Warrior football, they were there seven years ago for that heartbreaking loss. They may want a little bit of revenge. So now as we go back out onto the field after fourth down, they are gonna give Bruno Babato a chance to make a 39 yard field goal. It is straight down the middle. Lobato is 0 of 1 on field goal attempts in this young season. Holder is quarterback, Josh Johnson. Snap is good. Kick is away. It's long enough. And it's good! Bruno Lobato with a 39-yard field goal with two and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. So. 
That young man has got to be smiling ear to ear with his first field goal of 2021. Yeah, it's great confidence from his coach, especially after the missed extra point, to just put him out there for the long field goal. It looked like he had plenty of power and straight through. Yeah, that's important because he will think about that after missing the PAT, and now he's pretty much forgotten about that and is right. focusing. Well, he's focusing on the kickoff coming up, of course, but he will be thinking about that field goal. And that's got to be good for Coach McClanahan because when they get into district play in a couple weeks, may come a game or two may come down to the yep. Bobato's leg. Yep, absolutely. So give credit to the Warriors. After thinking they had a touchdown, instead at fourth and nine, they get three points anyway. And now let's see if Bobato can pin him deep again. Remember, it was Matthew Anderson who took it out of the end zone last time. You got to think Coach Rainey's going to say, take a knee in the end zone if Bobato gets it there. And he will get it there. Fair catch called for and made. Smart play. And so Bay Area Christian will take over with much better field position than when they started things off on their first drive. Yeah, it looks like maybe got a little bit of coaching after that return, first return, and he makes the smart decision, or they'll take it on the 25. So now let's see what the Broncos come up with. Down 9 nothing, but not with their backs to the wall. Matthew Anderson splits out wide left. Again, it's Barnes and Nave in the backfield. This time under center is Atwell. And he's going to give it to Nave following blockers. Not a huge hole. He'll get about three yards before he's swooned over by a host of Warriors. Yeah, sort of the quick pitch play and that jumbo package, just getting as many blockers as they can in front of the running back. Sean Kane makes the tackle after a three-yard gain. Senior linebacker is averaging five tackles a game in this young season. At three tackles for loss, a sack, forced fumble, and an interception. So Atwell under center again, second down and seven. It's time a trap play, which goes nowhere. Coming up off the bottom of the pile is Bryson Ivory, who's in there on the defensive line, the junior. Only a yard gain for Smith Nave. Yeah, again, not a lot of room on that inside. We'll see if they've got something else on third down here. Need a little Three. bit more yardage. Give credit to the front seven thus far of PWCA. We've seen Atwell go deep twice. Does he try again? Does he try an intermediate route? Dennis Anderson split out wide left on third down and six. Atwell play action again, rolling left. Pressured, throws over the middle, incomplete. Really good coverage that time as he had to throw it between two receivers in Matthew Anderson and Ethan Mann. And again, it's three and out for Bay Area Christian. Yeah, they like to put Atwell in motion there. I like that. He's rolling out to his left, but he has to turn his body to throw at that right hand and a lot of defenders, not a lot of options out there. Yeah, it's definitely not the most efficient move if you're rolling out to the left. Now, he wasn't pressured, so it's not a big deal, but he wasn't able to put the pass on target. So again, it's Felder set to receive this punt. Atwell had a nice roll last time. That's quite a bit better, a high punt. And Felder's going to field it and probably should have fair caught it. And a, a crackback block going to be called. Three flags come in, and Felder is going to going to run. Four flags come in, and Felder's going to go into the end zone. And Bay Area Christian kind of gave up on the play knowing that they were penalties. So not necessarily a good thing. But this touchdown will come back, and Felder knows it. Yeah, He's sort of a strange play. Uh, the defender almost let him catch the punt and gave him room so he could get away. But then we had a few blocks in the back happen, and then another one downfield. I think we've got four pieces of yellow out there. Yeah, two different uh, fouls. Yeah. The one they're going to call is probably a crackback, unnecessary yeah. roughness foul. Now, back, when, back in the day, that would have been a good block, but... You know, you can't blindside block somebody on a punt. We'll see the official call, but that's going to be a 15-yard penalty and march the Warriors back toward their 20.
It is personal foul. Personal foul against the Warriors. Decline. Yeah, two personal second fouls. Foul. The second, second one, it will be accepted. Yeah, that was kind of a no-doubter. The fans didn't like it because it was a highlight film hit, but unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of bodies on the ground for sure. Uh, but, yeah, you could tell. And as you said, the Broncos, some of the Broncos players sort of given up on the play and it stopped running. I'm um, just seeing those flags. Uh, but great effort from the Warriors nonetheless. So they haven't marked off the penalty yet. It's going to be back of the 19 or 20. So not ideal field position for the Warriors up 9 nothing in the final minute of quarter number one. And they'll stop it at the 19. So now the Warriors are going to have to mount a little more of a sustained drive unless they can get a big chunk play. But give credit to the defense for TWCA, two, three and outs against the high-powered offense. When we return to play, it'll be Hawkins, the lone setback. Ferris split out wide right. Dane LeMaster, who had the near touchdown catch, split out wide left. And it's Hawkins. It's actually following his blocker, Van Til, with blockers 25, first down and more. Into the secondary, and he's going to outrun everybody. One play, 81 yards, touchdown, Roland Hawkins. That was a variation on the old student, student body right. Followed his blockers, great blocking at the point of attack. And then once Hawkins saw daylight, he just accelerated and blew away three defenders from Bay Area Christian. Again, just running through that first contact, that arm tackle was not enough. And at that point, he just bust through the hole and daylight's from there. So that will give Rory Hawkins his third 100-yard rushing game of the season already, and we haven't even gotten to the second quarter yet. And it is his longest run of the season. Prior to that, it was just 39 yards. So now Bobato wants to actually put this extra point attempt through the uprights. That looks a lot better, and it's good. So that drive went 81 yards in 15 seconds, and it's now 16 to nothing. The Warriors with a commanding first quarter lead over Bay Area Christian, and the Broncos all of a sudden don't like to be on the road very much. They haven't played 12 minutes of true road football, and they're already down 16. Yeah, it's that run game from the Warriors. Just keep pounding, and that one on the outside. Uh, it doesn't seem like the Broncos can stop it. If they can get sort of a possession here, get some time with the football, get their defense a little time on the sidelines, a break, they might be able to get back into this. But it's been all Warriors so far. Warrior Boosters would like to thank the many generous banner sponsors you see around Warrior Stadium. If you'd like to show your businesses or families Warrior spirit, you can purchase a banner to go up at one or all of the sports venues on campus. Head to twca.net slash boosters for more information. So Bruno Babato's had a busy first quarter. This will be the fourth time he kicks the off. The you you, or rather fans. third time, and he's already attempted a couple of PATs and made a field goal. All right, back to kick. We'll see if he can put it into the end zone once again and see if the Broncos decide to return it or fair catch it. And a fair catch will be called for. So the Broncos looking for anything offensively, and Coach clanahan has got to be feeling pretty good about his defense right now. Yeah, they've been really good. I don't know if the Broncos have a first down at this point. I, yeah, it's it's really needs some, some stretch plays, and we saw it with that flea flicker early, but they can sort of spread it out, maybe get some short passes, some outside runs, and start moving the ball. That's right, Atwell has not completed a pass yet. Hasn't really even looked close. Mm -hmm. He's under center. 
with Nave and Barnes behind him. And that's Nave following Barnes, or rather that's Barnes following Nave. And I think the ball came out late, but the runner was down. We're going to give him five yards on what will likely be the last play of the first quarter. Yeah, much more positive play there. It's it's a good first down gain and puts him in pretty good position here. Maybe the clock will run out. It's true. That's their that's their longest play, I think. Right, right. In the early going, and they're going to stay in the huddle and let the clock tick down and turn the page on a quarter that would they they would like to forget. But Warrior Nation has got to be pretty happy the with their team the after 12 minutes of play, 16 points on the board. And a shutout being pitched by the defense. We'll be back with second quarter action in just a moment. This is TWCA High School Football on Vite Sport. Second down and four for Bay Area Christian. That's a six-yard gain on first down. Nave sticks his head in there. We'll get a couple of yards, but we'll be stopped short of the first down. So the last two plays have involved one running back going in motion to lead block for the other. And now it's third down and two for BAC. So the first third and short. Short for the Broncos. For the TWCA defense, they've had the luxury of third and long. We'll see if they can bow up and stop what may very well be another running play. Barnes and Nave in the backfield. That will under center on third and two. Sweet play left side. Barnes hits and pushes a defender forward across the 35, so that'll be a first down. He got two and a half, and he needed two. Yeah, there you go. It's a good sign. It's first first down of the game, and big improvement for the Broncos. Yeah, Austin Velikins actually met Barnes short of the first down, but Barnes had enough momentum and kind of ran over Velikins and moved the sticks for the first time for Bay Area Christian. Wing back to the right side on first down. And again, Nave. Puts his foot in the ground and heads forward off tackle for about a three-yard gain. Kind of a slow developing play, and the Warrior defense is able to get over and stop it. Yeah, a couple crafty sidesteps, but too many bodies up there and held him for a short gain. Gerardo, who made the tackle, comes out. Elijah Tokabins comes back in. Early in the second quarter, and Warriors have gotten a 16-point lead on the visiting Broncos. On second and seven, motion man. And this time they go the other way and meeting him in the backfield is Elijah Tokovic. He's got a touchdown and a tackle for loss in this game and it's going to be third and long courtesy of the Warrior defense. Yeah, that's a great stat line to have is the touchdown and the tackle for loss. But uh, as you say, just unblocked straight through and makes a big play. So it's going to be third and eight for Bay Area Christian, and we'll see if Atwell decides to roll out and put it up again. He's back in the shotgun with two receivers near side. Lots of time, throwing long, and he's going to overshoot everybody. He had three receivers going vertical, but he didn't put enough air under it, and the receivers were well covered anyway. So after getting their first first down of the game, it's punting time once again for the Broncos. Yeah, sort of a strange play call. He had plenty of time, but all receivers going deep downfield, so he just sort of heaved it out there in good coverage by the Warriors. 
Yeah, maybe if he'd have waited another second, he might have had a chance for them to get under it and make a play. Yeah. But as it stood, it, the ball bounced at least five yards away from every receiver. So now Atwell will have to put his leg back into work. All right, Derek Felder, back to the and the Warriors are poised to get the ball back and add to their lead. Quick punt, much better, but it's going to be returnable to 23 by Felder. Now he goes forward. And another flag comes down as Felder gets into Bronco territory at the 46, but unfortunately that's going to be nullified again. Yeah. It's another great return, and you can see how frustrated Felder is, but you could hear the crowd react to it. Looks like it's another, another personal foul or block in the back. Yeah, block in the back. That's a hold. So we know one thing that the Warriors will be working on in the upcoming practice, no matter how mm -hmm. this game turns out. Yeah. So with the penalty, it looks like the Warriors are going to start inside their 20 once again for the second consecutive drive. Last time, no problem, 81-yard scamper to the house by Rorick Hawkins. Yeah, it doesn't seem to really matter where the Warriors start from the 40 of the Broncos or from their own 20. They've moved the ball really well in this game. They will spot it at the 15. And TWCA comes out with stacked receivers to the near side of the field. Ferris and LeMaster. Johnson in the shotgun with Hawkins. Lots of room. I'm trying to bounce it outside. Stiff arms the tackler, crosses the 30 and brought down at about the 34-yard line. Cage Sink, the middle linebacker, makes the stop to save a first down, but still a pickup of eight. Again, great blocking by the offensive line for the Warriors. And lots of running room for Rorick Hawkins. With a 16-point lead, Coach McClanahan is probably content to keep it on the ground as much as possible. Second and two. He's going to throw his catch of the game. Good for six yards. And we'll move the chains. That's Bringleson's first catch of 2021. Clock rolling, 8.20 to play in the first half. Warriors look to the sideline as an official timeout. Looks like there's an equipment issue with one of the players for Bay Area Christian. Anderson's going to have to trot off. Going to be placed, replaced by John Russo. See if Coach McClanahan goes after the new corner. All right, first and ten for the Warriors. He's got Xavier Richmond out there on him. This time, Rorick Hawkins deep in the backfield, nine yards, and said they'll give it to the up man, Leslie. Breaks a leg tackle, and it's going to get good yardage across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Again, it's Cade Sink making the tackle. Leslie could have been stopped around the line of scrimmage, but he kept his legs moving and picked up six. Yeah, again, great effort. The first, first contact just keeps running, keeps working, and takes at least a couple bodies to take him down there. Coach McClanahan's got to be very happy with his two-pronged rushing attack of Hawkins and Leslie. We said 8.7 and 9.8 yards per carry coming into the game. And just enough pass offense to keep the defense honest. Second down and four. And it's Leslie, cuts it up. That was a lot better played, and Leslie's going to be dropped for a loss. Getting into the backfield quickly was Andrew Boyd. That forced Leslie to alter his route, and he ended up running backwards instead of forward, so that's going to be about a four-yard loss. Yeah, again, great effort, but just sometimes it's better to say north-south than east-west on that, and that, that's one of those examples right there. Exactly. If he puts his foot in the ground and goes straight forward, he probably gets no gain, but it, third and three is a lot better than third and seven. See if the Woodlands Christian Academy can keep this drive going. Two receivers to the right. Johnson in the shotgun. Third down and seven. Play action. Has time. Looking to the right side on the out route. And the out route caught first down by Cole Ferris at the 44-yard line. He ran the curl route at the hash mark. Perfectly thrown ball by Johnson. And he moves the change on third and long. 
Yeah, the defensive back had good position, but Ferris sort of just reached over him to catch the ball and made a good play for the first down. So give credit to the TWCA receivers who had to step up. They're making plays. Briggleson, now Cole Ferris. He makes his first catch of the 2021 season, and it's good for a first down. From the 47-yard line. Johnson will hand off to Hawkins into Bay Area Christian territory. Quickly picks up six yards. Halfway through quarter number two. And the Warriors are mounting a sustained drive thus far after starting inside their own 20. Now they have second down and five, and thus far the Broncos defense has not been able to keep the offense of TWCA off the scoreboard. And Hawkins splits out wide left along with another receiver. Two stacked receivers on second down and four. New formation and a fumbled exchange as the lone running back was Sebastian Bringleson. So the halfback was the tailback, and you can tell he doesn't take a lot of snaps at tailback as the exchange was fumbled. Yeah, it looked like the quarterback wasn't sure if the running back had it there, but both guys stayed on their toes and made sure they didn't lose the ball. So that puts the ball in the other side of the midday mid uh, field stripe, excuse me, at the 49-yard line, and it's third down and eight again. Johnson called on his arm to get the first down last time this happened. Can he do it again? Time for two receivers in the backfield. He's going to give it to Hawkins, and he's going to be stopped in the backfield for a one-yard loss. That time, the defense of the Broncos was not fooled as Ty Cappy comes in and swallows up Hawkins. And it's punting time for TWCA. Yeah, more of a spread formation there, so not as many offensive linemen up there to block. They sort of tried the draw play, but a good read from the Broncos' defense. So now Dean LeMaster comes in for his first punt. Dane LeMaster back to punt. And Smith Nave back outside his 20, Dane deep to receive it. The, the clock ticks inside, 4.15 to play. Five seconds on the play clock, but they get the snap away. Flag comes in. There might be a motion penalty against the Warriors. Fair catch called and made at the 17-yard line, but we'll check the penalty. Broncos could make them re-kick it again. I'm not sure if you want to try and risk a cough and corner punt as the referee is going to trot over to Les Rainey and see if he wants to decline the penalty. It is a legal procedure, and actually they can take the five yards added to the end of the return, so they'll mark the ball at the 24-yard line, and that's the best course of action. Broncos ball, first and 10, 24-yard line. So now the Broncos trailing 16 to nothing. Have a long way to go if they want to get on the scoreboard before halftime. They do get the opening kickoff of the third quarter, so if they can somehow mount a drive, they can possibly get back into this ball game. but this defense has been stout. A hole opens up briefly for Smith Nave, but it's swallowed up immediately as the linebackers and free safety Jacob Rios comes in to stop him after a one yard game. Yeah, he had that play right from the beginning and just ran straight into the hole and stopped it where it started. Free safety Rios is averaging six tackles a game, so you know he's aggressive on those run plays. Mm -hmm. Also has a tackle for loss. That one was almost a TFL. But it's second down and nine for Bay Area Christian. Time three backs in the backfield, and Atwell is under center. So the T, and they run a tackle trap inside, and that gets positive yards as Gannon Phillips comes in and makes the carry to about the 30-yard line. So a slight trick play makes it third down and five. Yeah, very unique formation there. Just about as jumbo as you can be, but then the three running backs, and they all of course sort of did their own fake and actually got a decent uh, decent yardage with them. Now it's one of their better running plays, and the misdirection gives them a much more makeable third down. They'll go back to that formation. Nave, Barnes, and Gannon Phillips. They look to the sideline for the play call. It's a tight formation, no wide receivers, and a 
Timeout going to be called by Coach Les Rainey as they couldn't get the play they wanted. So with 2.34 left to play in the first half, the Warrior defense trying to get off the field late in the second quarter with a 16-0 lead. Join Warrior Boosters today to support your Warrior Athletic and Fine Arts programs. Go to TWCA.net slash boosters for more information. Warriors would love to get the ball back and perhaps put some more points on the board, not only to extend their lead, but to keep their impressive streak of quarter scoring alive. The only quarter which they have not scored in 2021 was the first quarter of their last game. That was against St. John the 13th in Katy. They ended up winning that one 35 to 14. And that was close for three quarters. It was tied 14 all after three quarters of play. See what Coach McClanahan has in store for his defense as now the Broncos open up their formation. And they have Anderson as a receiver on the near side. Two backs in the backfield on third down and five. Play action. Atwell with time. Now pressure throwing over the middle. He almost intercepted at the 50-yard line as the pass was actually to the sideline. Felder almost with another interception. That would have been his fifth pick of this 2021 season. Wow. Instead, it's incomplete and a punting situation again for yeah. Bay Area. Yeah, and Atwell rolls out to a strong side that time. But great, I mean, it's one-on-one -on -one out there, and it was great defensive play, almost an interception. And that ball was on target, but it was on a line, and Felder was close enough in coverage where he made a break on the ball, just couldn't bring it down. So now he'll stand at his 35, hoping to receive this punt. Maybe get some yardage back that way. Atwell's been very busy. Hunting, another low snap. That one was almost blocked, but Felder's going to return that. Hopefully it will be penalty free. 35, nope, I spoke too soon, another penalty. He's got two blockers in front of him, but this isn't going to count again, and he'll be tackled inside the 20, but the third straight punt return with a penalty for TWCA, and the coaching staff can't believe it. Amazing. An another huge return from Felder, but you could see it. The block in the back there, and he's... Frustrated again. And all these penalties have come at the point of attack shortly after Felder catches the football. Right. They're not downfield illegal right. blocks. These are blocks by the initial blockers. And so that's going to push them back to about the 30, well, the 25 yard line. So another long field with 2.12 remaining. And they have two timeouts left in this first half. But give credit to the Warrior defense. Their third, third and out of this first half. That's really the only thing that the Warriors have done wrong is special teams on punt returns. Right, yeah, I mean, explosive plays, the most explosive plays have been on special teams and the run game on offense has been really steady. They just, have, like you said, have started deep in their own territory just from those sort of point of attack personal fouls. Yeah, that was actually a personal foul, as you said, yeah. not a holding, so that's 15 yards. Right. That will move TWCA back to their own 20. So now with a long field, we'll see if Johnson starts to put it up in the air again. Play action. He's going to take it himself. The left side with a blocker in front of him, first down. Across the 35, tripped up there, but a 16-yard gain as Smith Nave saves, saves an even bigger gain. But the second quarterback run for Josh Johnson, 16 yards. Yeah, a little designed quarterback run, and no reason for the Warriors to believe they can't score here on this drive. Now they reset the play clock, and we're under two minutes to play clock running. First down from the 36. Two receivers to the near side. Hawkins nests to Johnson. Play action, looks over the middle. It caught, and... In, is it incomplete? No, that's a catch. That's an interception by Rorick Hawkins. But, a flag on the play. but a flag was thrown at the start of the play. I'm wondering if this is another illegal procedure call against TWCA. Yeah, it looks like that's what the call is. And this interception will stand. Yeah, illegal man downfield. So the penalty will be declined, and that will be an interception for the Broncos. Again, Wesley Barnes coming up with the pick. 
And that puts the ball in Warrior territory Corey, from the 46-yard line with 1.44 left to play and a golden opportunity for the Broncos to put some points on the board in this second quarter. Yeah, best field position they've had so far in this game. And as you say, big opportunity, but not a lot of time left. They do have two timeouts remaining. Wide receiver split left side is Anderson. Atwell under center. And the give is to Barnes, who just had the pick, gets good yardage across the 40. They'll stop him at the 39-yard line, and timeout going to be called. Nope, there's no timeout. There's a flag on the play. Clock stops with a minute 37 left. We'll check the flag. The yeah, flag came from behind the play, so I wonder if that is defensive. It's near it. Well, they put it at the 40-yard line is where it was thrown, so... You know, it is a uh, hold. Huh. First okay. holding call against the offense of Bay Area Christian. And that will back them up 10 yards. And will quash the good start to this drive after the turnover. We'll spot it at the 49-yard line of TWCA. And they rerun the clock as well. So it's first and 14 as the hold was downfield. This time Atwell is in the shotgun. Nave is next to him. Nope, that's Barnes who gets the call, and he won't get near as much, maybe a yard, as he's met in the hole by Ezekiel Gerardo. Ezekiel Gerardo meets him in the hole. And as of right now, Short Coach Rainey is going to let the clock run, 109 and counting on second down. And Coach McClanahan not going to call a timeout just yet. He'll wait to see what happens on this play. As Nave and Anderson split out wide right, Barnes in the backfield on second down and 12. Phillips in motion. Rolling left is Atwell. Stops, throws. That's a completion. His first one. Phillips stopped at the 41-yard line. Is there a timeout going to be called? No. Clock still running. 41 seconds. Third down and four. So quickly up to the line of scrimmage is Atwell and company. Two receivers are going to have to go to the wide side of the field. 31 seconds. Third down and four. Atwell to Barnes. First down, that will stop the clock temporarily at the 35 with 22 seconds left to play, and now a timeout going to be called by the Broncos. That's their second one. So they decided to save the timeout on that third down play and then take it after the clock was temporarily stopped on first down. Yeah, sort of an interesting call by the coach there. I don't, I don't know if they really have enough time to get in the end zone here, but, you know, maybe in field goal position. We haven't seen their kicker out yet so far, but... Yeah, it could be a good position here. Yeah, Atwell has taken some shots downfield, but they've been off target yeah. and well covered. So you got to think TWCA is looking for that. Right. But if Atwell can put one on target and one of his receivers can make a play, they could get into the red zone, red zone or the end zone. But like you said, a limited number of tries, 22 seconds left in the first half and only one timeout for Bay Area Christian. Now it will be interesting to see what Coach McClanahan does I mean, you certainly don't want to give up the play, but you don't want to play too soft on defense and get them into good field goal range, maybe in another 15, 20 yards perhaps. Right. It, the man-to-man the -man coverage on the outside so far has been really good. I mean, we talked about Felder and how well he's done on the almost interception play. Um, so, you know, I would think he just sticks with what he's been doing. Um, maybe come off a little bit, but the pursuit of the Warriors defense has been so good, it's just... No reason to go away from that. Broncos offensive line has been giving Atwell time for the most part. Atwell under center now in this first down play. Rolling right side looking for the throwback, and he's got Nave with two defenders in front of him, and they get him inbounds across the 30. Clock going to run, and a flag comes in late. Oh, no. I wonder if that's going to be a face mask with 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Sean Kane and Austin Vertikins had him bottled up for a seven-yard gain inbounds. Let's, they're looking to line up for this second down call, but the officials are talking about exactly what happened. And it's going to be a face mask face against mask the Warriors. Against the Warriors. So that's going to put the ball inside the red zone and if I had to guess, the Broncos 
are probably going to take the yardage and just spike the football to stop the clock. Unless they have a play called. All right. Now the ball's at the 14-yard line. Under center is that well. They're telling him to stop till the chains are set. And now a timeout going to be called by Chris McClanahan, which is a smart play. McClanahan has two timeouts, so now he has one remaining, and now he can set his defense. One, maybe two plays remaining for Bay Area Christian. As we said, 10 seconds left, 14 yards away, but that could turn out to be a costly penalty, Adam. Yeah, it was great pursuit on the outside by the Warriors' defense, and just maybe got his hand caught up in the tackle there. Uh, the flag came in late, but like you say, it's it, – Really good field position, just 10 seconds left. So maybe you'd expect the, the worst defense to protect the end zone at this point. I don't know. It's that that man to man on the outside has been so effective so far. Yeah, you would think they would certainly try and do that to some extent. Knowing if they tackle him inbounds, they would have to stop the clock with a timeout and right. try a field goal or one more play. Right. But, and this and Coach Rainey may want to try for the end zone on a couple of plays. Remember, three points won't do him much good. He's down right. 16. You want to cut into that lead. And right. You might as well take a shot or two here, I mean, and having that one timeout in your pocket is, is really useful. All right, Warrior fans, let's hear this. The count Warriors down. have not really blitzed on defense. Might be a decent time to throw Atwell off his game if they choose to do it. Two receivers split to the right. With Barnes in the backfield. From the 14, rolling right side. They're going to play regular coverage. Flag route into the end zone. Caught touchdown. They let him get behind him, and Smith Dave has a touchdown. That was a perfectly thrown ball by Adam Atwell. And the penalty comes back to bite TWCA in the closing seconds of the second quarter. And it's not bad coverage at all. It's just a perfectly thrown ball into that corner. It almost looked like he'd overthrown him at first, but it's right in that back pylon. It's a, it's a touchdown for the Broncos late in this quarter. And they are going to try and go for two to make this a one-score game. Let's make some noise as the Broncos go for two. So all of a sudden, the momentum changes late in this first half. Bay Area Christian looking to make it an eight-point game. Atwell under center, one receiver to the right. Do they keep it on the ground? Nope, rolling right. It's going to be Atwell himself. Will he get in? Yes. And a flag, but a flag is down. So let's check the penalty. And it is against Bay Area Christian. So they're going to have to try this again. Two points comes off the board. And it's holding, so it's 10 yards. And so now you've got probably just as good a chance of... Well, no, they brought the kicker out. They're going to bring out Atwell and put him back to try the first extra point of the game for the Broncos equivalent to a 30-yard field goal. It will still be a two-score game regardless of what happens. Kick is up, and it's good. So with four ticks left on the clock, Adam Atwell finds Smith Knave, who is known for touchdowns on the ground. That's his first receiving touchdown of the season. And it's 16 to 7, and all of a sudden, the great football played for the first 22 minutes of this first half by the Warriors. It's being overshadowed a little bit by the last two minutes with the turnover, then the penalty, and then the late touchdown pass. Yeah, it seems like the score gives the Broncos a, a lot of credit here. It's the 16 to 7. Seems like the Warriors, as you said, have dominated much, much of this half, and we'll look to get that going again in the second half. So now we'll come a kickoff. Presumably a squib kick of some sort, and I, I can't imagine Coach McClanahan doing anything but just taking a knee or handing it off. But he's going to have to talk to his defense a little bit and his offense because, as we said before, the Broncos will get the ball to start the third quarter. So if you're a Warrior fan, you're a little bit nervous because this could be a two-point game early in the third quarter if they score on their first drive. Yeah, just a few mistakes here and there, you know, that – been steady, very steady. That front line on defense and that front line on offense 
is just like we said on those those personal fouls on the pun, and then the face mask has just come back to bite them. Yeah, the, and the punt returns. Who, who's to say if Felder would have gotten as much punt return right. yards if right. the penalty's not been done? But he certainly would have gotten some yards and yeah. improved their field position. And the last couple drives, that really would have helped. It is going to be a short pooch kick. They better get on it. It bounces around, and he will get on it, try and return it. Felder across the 25, actually has some running room, and it's going to be tackled at the 34-yard line with zeros on the clock. No flag. Nope, a late flag comes in about five seconds after the horn sounds. So this may be one of those penalties assessed in the third quarter. Because I think this is a post-possession foul. We'll stay right here and see what the penalty is. The flag came down 30 yards past where Felder was tackled near midfield. So it could have been an unsportsmanlike conduct or some type of personal foul as the teams leave the field. It is a dead ball foul, personal foul, and it's against TWCA. And that's going to be assessed on the opening kickoff. So when the third quarter begins, Babato will have to kick from his own 25 instead of the 40. Another late mistake for TWCA, but they're still up by nine, 16 to seven as we head into halftime. I'll be back in just a moment with Adam to talk about what happened in the first half. You're watching the Woodlands Christian Academy Warriors High School Football on Vibe Sports. back to Warriors Stadium and what looked like it was a near route occurring for the Woodlands Ashland Christian Academy Peter. through most of the second quarter and all of the first has now turned into a ball game as the Warriors score the first 16 points of the game and then have a chance to add to it but a top costly turnover and a couple of bad penalties make this a 16 to 7 game and the Warriors only up by nine quickly recapping the scoring the first drive after a 55 yard kickoff return for the Warriors they gave it to the big guy, Elijah Tokabins, a one-yard touchdown run on fourth and inches. The PAT was missed, making it 6 nothing. After three and out, Bruno Babato booted a 39-yard field goal, his first of the season, to make it 9 nothing with two and a half to play in the first quarter. And then after another three and out, an 81-yard touchdown scamper by Rorick Hawkins and the extra point made it 16 to nothing in the final minute of the first quarter. However, the second quarter, for only the second time in 2021, would be scoreless for the Woodlands Christian Academy, but not for Bay Area Christian. As the TWCA had a chance at the, their own 36-yard line in the final two minutes to perhaps mount a drive, but a, a tipped pass and an interception by Wesley Barnes gave the ball to Bay Area Christian in TWCA territory. Then after a face mask, put the ball inside the red zone with four seconds left, a 14-yard pass into the corner of the end zone from Adam Atwell to Smith Nave, and the extra point made it 16-7. to And then to make matters worse, a final personal foul will make TWCA kick off from the 25 to start the third quarter. And Adam, a roller coaster first half for Warrior fans. Yeah, if you would have told me that it would be 16 to 7 at halftime when at the end of the first quarter we were at 16 to 0 i mean it looked like the warriors would just continue to dominate it, it the score doesn't really reflect how the game's gone but again those those few, a couple of mistakes a couple of errors a couple of mental errors from the warriors but uh, that you know that running game has been really good and and that defense especially on the outside has been covering those receivers really well so yeah, we'll see. I mean, this game really is, is closer than it should be, I think. As you watch the TWCA cheerleading crew performing at halftime, we're going to step aside, but we'll be back to talk about things before the third quarter kickoff and then show you what should be an interesting second half of football. After two quarters of play at Warrior Stadium in the Woodlands, it's the Woodlands Christian Academy 16 and Bay Area Christian 7. You're watching TWCA High School Football on Vibe Sports.
Back here at Warrior Stadium in the Woodlands as the Warriors returning to the field pretty late as the Bay Area Christian team was already on their sideline. Still about a minute or two away from the third quarter kickoff. Chris Martin along with Adam Mueller, Jasmine Jones on camera. Where it's the Warriors at TWCA leading Bay Area Christian 16 to seven after two quarters of play. But as we talked about, the momentum shifted in the final couple minutes of the second quarter and it will be Bay Area Christian to receive the ball to start the third quarter and the ball will be kicked off from the 25 yard line is because of the uh, penalty at the end of the first half. So Adam, what kind of adjustments do you think either team or both teams had to make during the halftime break? Yeah, I mean, I think for the Warriors, it's just cutting out those penalties. I mean, it's it's the running game's working really well and that the defense seemed to be doing its job just till the end there. I think, I think the Broncos, I'd like to see them maybe spread it out a little bit more, get Atwell in motion and that Again, for the Warriors, that sort of dual threat running back situation they have is, is working pretty well. It's just cut those mistakes. Yeah, the mistakes you're referring to is, uh, first of all, three penalties on punt returns, almost the same type, almost, you know, in the same portion of the, kick of the punt return setup right. that negated big returns. Then an interception off a tipped pass, which was a mistake, partially bad luck. Then what would have been a third and long after a, a great tackle inbounds by a couple of Warrior players, but a face mask was called, moved the ball inside the 20, and then a last-second pass gave the Broncos their only touchdown. And now the official, as you can see, is walking the football back toward the 25-yard line, reminding us of the personal foul penalty, which came about five seconds after the first half clock expired. So again, it's just those silly mistakes, and that kind of leaves an opening for the Broncos. You know, if they can get the momentum back and score here, it's a one-score game. So going to take a near miracle for Bobato to put this one in the end zone. Probably going to be a return. Smith Nave back there to receive it, along with Corbin Whittington. Roboto's kick is going to be fielded by Whittington at the 15. At the 30. Tackled immediately at the 32-yard line. So good coverage prevents a long return as, as Xavier Richmond makes the tackle in the open field. So the Broncos will start at their 32-yard line. And again, the TWCA defense... The first two drives of the first quarter held the Broncos to three and outs three times overall in the first half. Right, first the Can they buckle down and continue to do it? Atwell under center. Maven Barnes behind him. It's Barnes. Puts his foot in the ground across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. A pickup of five. Derek Felder in on the stop from a safety spot. Yeah, it's that inside rush again, and, and nice yardage. It seems like, especially at the end of the first half, he was sort of getting into a rhythm, getting you know those larger chunks, four or five yards, instead of that one or two that he was getting early on in the game. That's right. The first few running plays were very short, but they're starting to get their feet under them. At least the offensive line is. Second and five. This time it's Nave around the right side. And he's going to be hit just beyond the line of scrimmage. He'll make the 40, and that's it. And bring up third down and three. Elijah Tokabens leads a host of Warriors on the tackle. Yeah, it's those big fellows up front pushing back. It's a good push, and see if they can stop him here third and short. We'll see if Coach Rainey of the Broncos keeps it on the ground or if he tries to do something a little bit non-traditional to get the three yards. If it's an incomplete pass, you might think they would punt it. So we'll wonder if he'll keep it on the ground. On third and three, long count. And they give this to Barnes, who will be tackled right at the marker. He will have the first down. Again, Tokabin's in on the tackle, but a pick of about three and a half yards. So the Broncos, after being unable to get a first down in the first quarter, start the third quarter with a first down. You would think the Broncos would like to 
grind out a long, sustained drive, and the Warrior defense is going to have to step up and try and put a stop to that. Atwell, first man through, tackled in the backfield is Barnes. And give a TFL to number 22, Sean Kane, unofficially his fourth of the season. Yeah, it's great pursuit into the backfield, sort of reading the play. It's rolling out to the left there with the two backs, and he makes a great tackle and sets them back here on second down. That's right, a loss of one. So second and long. Same formation. Lone receiver is Anderson on the left side. Atwell rolling to the right side. Let's it go. Man wide open at the 30. Blown coverage. No flags. That's going to be an easy touchdown for Bay Area Christian. Wow. Another mistake. Really the first mistake in the secondary this game for TWCA. And that's good for 57 yards. Yeah, and it's not a complicated play. Atwell just runs back there and looks up and has a receiver wide open. It's a blown coverage back there. Uh, and that's another mistake from the Warriors. Just unexpected here in the second half. Right, and Gannon Phillips was lined up on the left side, and he just ran a drag route across the formation, and presumably the defensive backs were thinking run all the time, and he was 10 yards behind everybody. So Atwell will try to make this a two-point game. Kick is up and good. So with 9.22 left to play in the third quarter, the 16-point lead has almost been evaporated by TWCA. They'll get the ball back up to 16 to 14. That's Atwell's second touchdown pass in two minutes and 42 seconds of game time. So now you have to say it's Bay Area Christian that has the momentum, and it's up to the TWCA offense to try and hoist to to get it back from them. Is your back hurting from sitting in the bleachers or were you running late and you didn't get your favorite seats? Head over to TWCA.net slash boosters to purchase seat back seats reserved especially for you so you can sit back comfortably and enjoy the games all year long from your favorite spot. So Adam Atwell, the BAC quarterback, had been off the mark starting this game but he put it right on target to end the first half, and he just did the right thing and didn't make a mistake on that wide open pass and got himself a 57-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, momentum can be such a strange thing in football sometimes. I mean, could barely complete a pass in the first half and makes it look easy now. Remember, it was on second down at 11, so presumably a passing down, but the secondary still didn't see Gannon Phillips slipping behind them. Atwell's going to try a little pooch kick, and a fair catch made at the 42-yard line. Nice heads-up play by Xavier Richmond. So two good special teams plays in this third quarter by Richmond on the tackle on the kickoff return and on a curious call from Les Rainey on the pooch kick. Couldn't get it over the front line, and Richmond makes an easy fair catch. Yeah, strange signal to your defense there, maybe even saying, well, we – we don't believe they can get a stop, so we want to get the ball back on the kickoff. Uh, I don't know about that one. Well, it's certainly challenging your defense because another short field for TWCA. The Broncos are going to have to step it up. Johnson in the shotgun. Play action. Going to take it himself. Going to try to avoid two tacklers, and somehow does. He's going to get to the right side, and he'll actually gain a yard to the 44-yard line. Wow, he faked the handoff to Rorick Hawkins and was staring right in the face of two different Bronco defenders. He juked one, juked the second one, and managed to get two yards. Unbelievable run by Josh Johnson. There are two defenders right there with him when he faked the handoff, and he got past both and somehow made it a positive play. If that was a read option, he should have handed it off, yeah. but he did make something out of nothing, and instead of second and 13 or so, it's second down and eight. This time three backs in the backfield in that pistol formation. And it will be Hawkins with room off the left side across midfield and hit hard in the secondary and dragged down. He's going to be stopped short of the first down, and that's his numerical counterpart, number three, Wesley Barnes, coming up from his safety spot. It's going to be third down and one, but TWCA has it in BAC territory. Yeah, like we saw in that first quarter, Hawkins just blasting through the hole, but great play by the safety there to keep him a yard short. 
Yeah, it looked like Hawkins was going to run for a while, but that was a message-sending clean hit mm -hmm. by West Barnes. Now, third down and short. Johnson's in the shotgun. Hawkins eight yards off the line of scrimmage. And it will be Hawkins who will get the first down. Cade Sink drags him backward, but Hawkins gets to the 45-yard line, pick up a three. The Bay Area Christian defenders were crashing in, trying to get him in the backfield, but Hawkins still moves the six. Yeah, usually we've seen Ryan Leslie with that inside handoff, but Hawkins can go on the outside and the inside. Yeah, right now, Leslie is not in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side on this first play from the BAC side of the field in the second half. They've got two receivers on the line of scrimmage. That's an illegal formation. Hawkins is going to go ahead and take it himself, and he will be tackled for a loss. He cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. He's coming up to make the play as Andrew Boyd. It's a good thing it wasn't a pass play because you had two receivers on the line of scrimmage, and that would have been an illegal receiver downfield. But it is no gain and a long second down for TWCA. Yeah, sort of the pistol pitch play there, and didn't – Hawkins had to make up a lot of ground to get back to the line of scrimmage. Just barely did. Looks like one of the adjustments the Bronco defenders are making. They're starting to shoot the gaps and get into the backfield quicker. And with Hawkins eight yards off the ball, that could be a problem. Second down and ten. Play action, rolling right side. And fumble, sack, fumble, and BAC has it in midfield. Josh Johnson never saw him. First lost fumble of the game, scooped up by Titus Grumbles. I think it was, well, I couldn't see who made the tackle, but the forced fumble gives the ball back to BAC and only half a field to go in order to take the lead. 6.37 left to play in the third quarter. Yeah, just like we had seen a few plays earlier, that outside pressure and pursuit from the Broncos, and Johnson just had his back turned, and the blindside hit ball came out. So now, tough position for TWCAD after giving up that quick touchdown. That's Phillips in motion, play action, rolling left, looking long again, and that's almost an excellent interception, but the pass falls incomplete. Pass intended. Well, actually, that was Sebastian Briggleson who made the play, and that really wasn't a good pass by Atwell. Yeah, he had Briggleson had that red from the beginning. He was actually in front of the receiver and closer to where the pat, the ball was going. Almost made an incredible one-handed play. What Atwell seems to do well is set up and throw on his first read, but if it's not there, he's throwing it anyway, right. and he's not checking down. Second down and 10, and Atwell's under center. And he'll give it to Barnes following his blockers. He won't get very far. Maybe two yards. So now the Warrior defense has a chance to force a three and out after the turnover. A little bit of pushing and shoving after the play. You don't want that to escalate. Especially since the TWCA defense has already been guilty of some silly personal fouls. So now it's third down and eight. Fast moving third quarter. We're already under six minutes to play. We'll see if Atwell goes back to the air. There's that full house backfield with three backs behind him. They'll try that tackle trap. Doesn't work. Phillips is tackled at the midfield strike. Tackle for loss. Fourth down for BAC. Ellisor comes in from his linebacker spot. That was the same play that gained some yardage in the first half. Ellisor read it like a book that time. Yeah, it's that three-back formation again, and they try it inside, and the pursuit from the worst defense is so good, they just push him right back. So now Atwell stands back to punt. Felder at his 15. Three penalties on punt returns in the game thus far, but... Atwell's going to try and keep it away from Felder, and that's probably a good thing for TWCA as well, as the ball will go out of bounds around the 25. They'll spot it at the 21, so a 29-yard punt, but the Warriors get it back, and they quick-change defense 
stops on three and out after the fumble. Yeah, big play. I mean, all the momentum so far, I mean, at the end of the second quarter and now here in the third quarter, has been with the Broncos. And the Warriors defense come up with a big play and a big stop. Let's see if they're, that running game with Hawkins and Leslie can get going again. We talked about the potential pass play issues with the five receivers out. That hasn't been much of a problem because the receivers that are playing are making catches, but mm -hmm. that time, that long developing pass play, Josh Johnson blindsided from behind and he fumbled the ball. Kind of a tough snap, but Hawkins with a lot of room breaks to the outside, but a flag comes down late, and that might be a horse collar tackle on Kate Sink. It's a four yard gain as it looked like Hawkins was gonna sprint to daylight. But let's check the flag. No, it's going to be against the Warriors. And it is holding. So wipe away the game by Hawkins. The Warrior offense has played a relatively clean game, a couple of procedure penalties, but I think that's the first hold. And that puts the ball back at the 15-yard line. So first and 20. Warriors clinging to a two-point lead, but now have a first and long. Tough snap. Hawkins gets the handoff with blockers in front of him, but he's tackled immediately after about a two-yard gain as, again, going into the backfield, Titus grumbles and Landon Hall. So the Broncos' defense definitely playing more aggressive up front. Yeah, and just that small timing issue there with Johnson and Hawkins and, as you say, the Broncos' defense getting into those holes more, making solid tackles, not letting Hawkins get, get out after that first contact. The second and long may be a passing situation, but if you're Coach McClanahan, you got to be worried about what happened last time Josh Johnson dropped back to pass. Looks to throw, quick pass into the flat, long throw, and it'll be a short gain of about four yards to Dane LeMaster. So it's going to bring up third down and 14. So if anything else, that maybe gives Josh Johnson a little bit more confidence. He's going to have to make a throw on this play, I think. Yeah, like you say, it's a simple pass out there on the outside of LeMaster. And see if they get a more elaborate here with the play calling uh, or stay conservative. What we haven't seen is a screen pass. Don't know if the Warriors have that in their playbook. Might be a good time to call it with the aggressive Bay Area defense, high snap on third down, throwing long over the middle, he missed it, incomplete. Breaking for daylight was Cole Ferris, and you got to think Josh Johnson panicked a little bit. With the high snap, pulled it down, just threw it to a spot, really didn't aim for it, and now it's fourth down. Yeah, that's a couple snaps now in this drive that have a little bit, been a little bit off, and Ferris is behind that those linebackers, and he's got some daylight, just can't quite make the connection. So right now it's... Josh Johnson struggling a little bit after the fumble and now a pass which would have gotten the first down had it been on target. Now it's Smith Nave standing at his 45 as LeMaster ready to punt it away. Nice high long punt. It's going to bounce around and get a, take an excellent bounce all the way down to the 27 yard line. That's a 52 yard punt. That's pretty amazing. And they yeah. needed it. And it's a good punt and good pursuit from the Warriors. And that's part of the reason why May didn't go in for the catch. Their catch is because there was already Warriors on top of him, so he let it bounce, and it bounced another 20, 30 yards. So with 310 left to play, it's still the Warriors clinging to a 16-14 lead over Bay Area Christian. Broncos have the ball back, trying to drive and get their first lead of the night. Atwell under center. It's a reverse as they give it to Phillips on the double sweep, and he breaks tackles across the 40, and he'll have the first down, an impressive gain on the trick play of 16 yards. Yeah, and the runner from the outside comes around, gets the pitch, and then pitches it back to the inside to the running back, and a tricky little play, and it worked out. Yeah, Gannon Phillips had tried the misdirection on the handoff, he was stopped in the backfield last time, but on the double pitch, there's daylight. And it, that might be their longest running play of the night. Ball at the 42-yard line now. This time it's a straight handoff to Barnes. Breaking tackles, but then bounced back at the 45-yard line after about a four-yard gain. 
I think that was Felder who came up from a safety spot. Kind of tattooed him on the big hit. So the Warrior defense who stepped up, forced a three and out after a fumble. Facing a second down and six. This time Anderson splits out wide right. Nave and Barnes in the backfield. And it's going to be Nave breaks one tackle, but not the second. He'll get two yards. And bring up third down and four. Sean Kane making the tackle. Yeah, it's more misdirection from the Broncos there. And Warriors staying at their post, staying steady, not, not getting tricked here. And make a good play third down now. A big play. A tackle for loss probably means a punt, but even if they don't get the first down, maybe four down territory. Third down and four. Atwell looking to throw this time. Nobody open being chased, throws into the flat. It's caught, but it's going to be a, a tackle for loss as Nave was all alone. He was the outlet route. Finally, Atwell checks down, but that's a five-yard loss, and that started because of great coverage on the back end. Yeah, and like we talked about, his first option wasn't there, and he had two running backs that were both outlet passes, so not a lot of options for him downfield and really good pursuit from the Warriors' defense. That's right. That play wasn't designed to pick up yardage necessarily if the first option was gone, and a nice job by the defense to come up and make the stop, and now Atwell will drop back to punt again. Felder at his 23. Will he get a chance to return it? Will it be a clean return? Nope. Atwell's going to punt it out of bounds. Not that great of a punt. We'll see where the official stops. Yeah, he's going to stop at about the 40-yard line. That's only an 18-yard punt. Yeah, I mean, he's really trying to keep the ball away from Felder. It essentially facing his sideline for that punt, kicking it right out of bounds. I guess it could, I mean, if that's what the coach tells him to do, then he yeah. accomplished his goal and it yep. handed over to the Bay Area Christian defense. So now it's TWCA. These two drives have ended in a fumble and a three and out here in the third quarter. In danger of getting going their second consecutive scoreless quarter, which hasn't happened thus far this season. There's that unusual pistol. This time it's to get to Leslie. He gets to the second level, 45, first down and more. Breaks in the open field, 35 at the 25. No flags, will he be caught at the 10? Tackle inside the five. A 58-yard run for Ryan Leslie, and that time the aggressive defense overran the play and Leslie made a pay. Yeah, and it's the first time we've seen Leslie in this second half and it's that inside handoff and he's sort of in the power back from this point but there are a couple little juice couple good moves and he gets out for a huge gain so now first down and goal and that could be a momentum changing play if they can convert ten seconds on the play clock as they break the huddle that will run a play quick Johnson in the shotgun Hawkins behind him Get the snap away. Hawkins into the end zone. Yes, touchdown. touchdown. Roy Hawkins with his second touchdown of the night. This one from two yards out, and TWCA extends its lead. Yeah, and if you continue to stick with the run, you know, eventually that defense is going to get tired or over-pursue, and it works with the big play, and they capitalize with the touchdown. Well, somebody must have heard me. They said, nope, we're going to score in this quarter. We're not going for another scoreless quarter, and that's good. Now, Bobato, if he makes this PAT, it's a two-score game again. He's already missed one tonight. Kind of a high snap. Puts this one up. And this one is good. Just 54 ticks left in the third quarter. And it's 23-14 TWCA over Bay Area Christian. Did you have to park a mile away that made you miss kickoff? You will no longer have to stress about parking by joining Warrior Boosters at the championship level or higher. You will receive a reserved parking spot plus more perks. Visit TWCA.net slash boosters to join today. I can vouch for that. I got my all my steps in walking from the parking lot to this fine stadium. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, when you arrive early, you get the you get the best spots, and that's, uh, we, always, uh, we always want to arrive early and get the equipment up here, yeah. So we talked about old momentum 
it looked like Bay Area Christian had it at the end of the first half, still had it at the second half after recovering the fumble, but then the TWCA defense holds them three and out, and after a couple possessions, it looks like the Warriors have rested it back with that 58-yard scamper by Ryan Leslie and the subsequent two-yard plunge by Roark Hawkins. Hawkins now with seven touchdowns on the season. And Ryan Leslie recording his longest run of 2021. It was 48. He bested that by 10 yards. Now can Bobato, he's going to swim kick it. He's not going to put it into the field of play. And that's going to be picked up at the 18 and fumbled out of bounds. So a break for TWCA and special teams very happy with that. I might have let it roll out of bounds. It was heading that way. Yeah, we've seen such a variety of kickoffs uh, in this game. It was sort of bobbling out. I don't know. It. I don't know if you can just let that one go out of bounds, but a close call there for the Broncos. It was almost like that first kickoff, which went into the end zone, but Broncos decided to return it. It ended up at their nine. This one not as bad. They spotted on the 19. But now the Warrior defense... They can stand tall once again. They can get good field position after a punt. Barnes and Nave in the backfield. Atwell under center. And they give it to Phillips, who's going to break to the outside. And he's not going to get anywhere. Tackle for loss at the 15-yard line. Read like a book by Jacob Rios. And we got a... BAC player down, but again, that was the play that worked the first yep. time, but then the last two times they've run it, it's been a tackle for yeah, loss. Yeah, it's that misdirection. I think the coach maybe talked to them at halftime about that because they're staying in their lanes. They're staying on their guys, and Rios makes a great play. That's actually Gannon Phillips, the ball carrier, who's lying on his back. Clock stopped with 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. 16 to 7 coming out of halftime, and then Bay Area Christian took the opening kickoff, and Atwell found a wide open Gannon Phillips for that touchdown catch of 57 yards, slipped behind the defense, and that made it 16 to 14 after Atwell's PAT. And then had a chance to get the lead for the first time after recovering. A Josh Johnson fumble at midfield, but they went three and out. And eventually the Warriors got the football back. Ryan Leslie scampered 58 yards. Hawkins carried it for the final two. And after the PAT, it's back to a two score game. When we resume play, it'll be second down and 14. what could very well be the last play of the third quarter. Atwell comes into the with the play. This time it's Anderson splitting out wide right on second down and long. And they're going to give it to Nay with a bit of a hole. He'll get some yards, but he'll be pushed back by Ezekiel Gerardo as Nave gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And that's going to be it for quarter number three. It's been back and forth, but we're, we leave the quarter just like we started with the Warriors with a nine-point lead over visiting Bay Area Christian, 23-14. We'll be back with the final quarter in just a moment. You're watching the Woodlands Christian Academy Warriors High School Football on Vibe Sports. In a battle of unbeatens here in the Woodlands, it's the home team Warriors playing in front of their home fans for the first time in 2021 with a nine-point lead. And their defense 
has a third and nine with a chance to get off the field and perhaps get good field position for their offense. Atwell under center. The lone setback is Barnes. Looking to throw is Atwell. Pressure from the backside. Let's it go, and it's caught at the 41st down on what might have been a busted route because there are two receivers in the same spot, but somehow Matthew Anderson comes down with it at the 45-yard line. On third and nine, they get 25 yards, and that's a big play on offense for BAC. Yeah, it's another one of those vertical routes, and the Warrior defensive backs just get turned around, and this actually throws it pretty short, but the Bronco wide receiver able to come back to the ball and make the play. So now, Bay Area Christian on their own 45 and moving the football. Receiver to the left. They try that same play, but with a different running runner. And being swallowed up is number 14, Noah Box. So that was when Gannon Phillips on the double pitch got 15 yards. They put Box in there, but this time TWCA was ready for it. Yeah, you can really see it with the Warriors defenders right now. They're not getting caught out in fakes or misdirections. They're just staying at their assignment, and that showed on that play. Another tackle for loss for the Warrior D. So it's second down and 12. Anderson wide right, straight handoff to Barnes. Hit at the line of scrimmage, he'll get one yard, but a flag comes in late about three seconds after the play, and that doesn't bode well for Warrior fans. Could this be another costly defensive play? It is another face mask on the defense for the Warriors, and I think that's going to give Bay Area Christian an automatic first down on what would have been third and long. Yeah, it's really just long pass plays and penalties that have hurt the Warriors in this game. And, and I mean, we were looking at a third and long there if you make the stop, but that one hurts. And they march the ball into Warrior territory at the 41 with a fresh set of downs. Another mistake takes the Warrior defense out of the chance to gain the momentum. Atwell under center. Lee Flicker again, lets it go into double coverage. This time it's picked off. Derek Felder with interception number five of 2021. And again, an ill-advised pass by Adam Atwell. He just turned around and threw it, and that time yep. Felder was ready for it. Yep, bit of a rainbow, and again, short on the receiver, and Felder turns his head around and sees where the ball is, and it's actually two Warriors defenders that were fighting for that ball, not an offensive player, and a great play on defense. So just when you think TWCA becomes a victim to its mistakes. They turn around and make another play, and they have the ball on their own 25-yard line with 10-23 to play in the ball game and a nine-point lead. You would think a long touchdown drive could all but seal the game. Hawkins deep in the pistol. Johnson is going to give it to Leslie around right side. He got a long game last time. This time he crosses the 25-yard line to about the 26. There is a flag on the play. Oh, they're picking up the flag, so the six-yard game will stand. So that's got to be a relief for Warrior fans, because it seems like most of the yellow has been against the green tonight. So they'll wind the clock. Coach McClanahan trying to wear down his Bay Area Christian defense, perhaps get another score and put this game away. This time it's that three-back pistol formation on second and four. Johnson gives to Leslie. Same play, other side. First down, but a flag flies at the snap of the football. If it counts, Leslie will have it out to the 39-yard line for a 13-yard gain. But let's check the penalty. And it's illegal procedure against TWCA. Wipe away the first down, and it's second and long for the Warriors. Again, that hurts. Nobody moved early 
it was just an illegal formation because the flag was thrown at the snap of the football. Perhaps it was wide receivers lining up on the line of scrimmage again like we've seen earlier. In any case, it's second and nine. And this time, Hawkins is all alone in the backfield with two receivers to the left. And it is Hawkins trying the left side. Makes a man miss with a great juke in the open field. First down and more. And he gets back to about where he was stopped, where Leslie was stopped earlier at the 40-yard line. No flags. And what a great move he put on Reese Brewer, who was in there at the outside linebacker spot. Yeah, yeah, made the linebacker look a little silly there. Just too fast, the juke from left to his right. And uh, steady, steady as she goes here for the Warriors running game. Well, I'm not a football coach, but I would imagine a steady dose of Rora Hawkins might be on the menu for the Warriors. On first down, this time it's a sweet play left side. Uh, great play in the backfield as Hawkins is tackled for a loss. Again, that penetration by Cade Sink. He's a 6'2", 225-pound junior linebacker who's been all over the place. That time it's a tackle for loss of three yards. Yeah, runs through unblocked and just had, it, had the play read from the beginning. Makes a great play. One of the few true sweet plays we've seen the Warriors run because it was slower developing. Sink was able to get back there in the backfield and make the TFL. Inside 8.20 to play. See if Johnson takes to the air. Nope, Leslie, right side, and it won't get far. Ankle tackle by number 51, Ty Cappy. He's the one with the fumble recovery. Now it's third down and 11. So with a nine point lead, the temptation is to be conservative. But for Coach McClanahan, you want your offense to keep the ball too. One receiver to the right on third and 11. It's Leslie again, and he's gonna be bobbled up. He'll get to the 40 and that's about it. So Coach McClanahan plays it conservatively and. They'll punt on fourth and nine, but the clock continues to run. Yeah, trusting his defense on that one for sure. And we'll see. I mean, they've been pretty good in this game, just those just those penalties and those long pass plays, that's all. And the Broncos' defense is starting to key on Ryan Leslie after that 58-yard run last quarter. So that'll put Dane LeMaster back in punt formation. Felder gets set. Smith Nave back to receive it. A high short punt. Probably will not be returned, but it will bounce around and fall dead at about the 28 yard line. So 32 yard punt and no return. So with 648 left to play in the game, Bay Area Christian has the football, but they're down two scores. Four. Don't miss your chance to play the 10th Annual Warrior Boosters Golf Tournament on October 27th, presented by Waste Connections. Few sponsorships remain, so sign up today at twca.net slash golf. Spot the ball at the 28-yard line. So can the defense close this one out with a big stop? Atwell's in a shotgun, looks to throw into the flat. They set up a wide receiver screen that goes nowhere. Great job by the Warrior defense as making the catch was Matthew Anderson, but he ran into one of his blockers. He ended up, get, he ended up getting three yards somehow. Yeah, the throw from Atwell was a little, a little ahead, a little low to the receiver, and he kind of had to reach out there. His momentum sort of brought him right into his blocker, like you said, and sort of stopped the play. That was the first time we've seen the wide receiver screen from Bay Area Christian. But again, well played by the Warriors. Second down and seven, two receivers to the top of the screen. Low snap, they're gonna try it again. And that's even worse. That's gonna be a tackle for loss. I guess the Warriors, I guess the Broncos thinking the Warriors would ignore it the second time, but that's not what happened. Yeah, Warriors defense just keyed in on that play again, and three or four bodies were there right when he caught the pass. Great pursuit. And now if you're the Warrior D, you've got to look for the fake pass into the flat and trying to slip a man past the defense into the secondary. 
at well. That's exactly what they're trying. Throwing downfield, incomplete. But that was well defended by the Warriors' defensive backfield. As both Xavier Richmond and Jacob Rios were running with the receiver, and really Atwell's pass had no chance. Yeah, and Chris, you called it right on the money. as the, the the fake, the where they had gone the two previous plays and going deep, but the two defensive backs right with them, and the pass too far, couldn't complete it. Kind of surprised that Coach Rainey went back to it a second time before trying it. Uh, and starting early is one of the gunners on the near side. I think that's Reese Brewer who's going to get flagged for it. So that'll be five yards further back for Atwell to punt. Something we're not seeing a whole lot of, that penalty against the Broncos. Not, that, not to imply the, the flags have been one-sided. I think the penalties have been well called on both sides. But Bay Area Christian is playing a little bit of a cleaner game, even though the scoreboard doesn't show it. Atwell's punt again. This one's high, and this one's short once again. And that will be a less than 20-yard punt, depending on where the official stops. 17-yard punt. I understand you want to keep it away from Felder, but now you're just giving great field position to a team of, who has a nine-point lead with 521 left to play in the game. Yeah, I think when you're that deep in your own part of the field, I think you just got to punt that away. I know Felder has been great, but... Yeah, that's, that's rough. So now, the Woodlands Christian Academy can taste their fourth win of the season if they can take care of business on offense and just keep the chains moving. Stacked receivers to the right side now with Josh Johnson in the shotgun. They'll just give it to Hawkins with a little bit of room. Nice move. Still going at the 40. Rather the 37 to the 36 yard line. So he picks up six yards and the clock continues to move. Both teams with all three of their timeouts remaining in the half. And you would think Coach Randy's going to have to start using them if his defense can't get a stop here. That's the advantages of having a play clock you can look at if you want to, Josh Johnson and work it down as far as he can. He's got backs on either side of him and receivers to either side on second and four. This time he's going to take it around the left side. Blockers in front, and he'll have the first down and more inside the 25-yard line. So Josh Johnson doesn't run a lot, but he seems to make his runs count, and that's good for 13. Yeah, like you said, we haven't seen Johnson run a lot tonight, but the, when he has run, it seems like it has been effective, and that one right up the middle and worked for a big first down. Time with everybody keying on Hawkins. Chris McClanahan calls Johnson's number, and they go the other way. Same formation. High snap again. Johnson looks to throw, throwing the, the flag route. Incomplete at the two-yard line. Has actually tried the wheel route. Brings up second down from the Running the receiver. That was actually Dane LeMaster who has a touchdown catch, trying to get him to the corner. That pass was just underthrown and fell to the turf. Yeah, it was one-on-one -on -one coverage out there on the outside, and receiver almost reached around to make the play there, but I guess better it's incomplete to almost an interception. I understand you want to put a dagger in your opponent, but yeah. that made Warrior fans catch their breath a little bit. Perhaps now back to plan A with Hawkins on the ground on second and 10. And up the middle, following his blockers, making a move inside the 20, inside the 15, and they'll have a first down. Hawkins talking up another 11 yards. As we said, he went over the 100-yard mark in the first half, courtesy of that 81-yard touchdown run. you got to believe he's kind of close to 200 and well over his average of 122.3 a game. Yeah, and it was number 71, Max Abernathy, ahead of him with the pancake block. Made it real easy to just slip up the middle for the big game. So now back in the red zone of the Warriors on the 14-yard line. This time it's Leslie right side has a crease across the 10 and stumbles forward to about the 7-yard line. 
Leslie gets halfway to the end zone and keeps the clock running inside three minutes to play. And now uh, an official timeout going to be called. Official timeout. No, that's actually a timeout charged to the Broncos, which makes sense. 2.56 to play. And they want to try and keep some clock. Hopefully their defense gets a stop. But it's going to take a, a minor miracle for the Broncos to score twice. Warrior Boosters is, provide, is, is pleased to announce that this year's 2021 fall season sports sponsor is Foster Fence. Thank you to the Holloway family for your generous sponsorship and for supporting the Warrior athletes and fine art student, students. A couple of undefeated teams coming into tonight. As we said earlier, the Warriors are coming off a bye week. This pits the number seven team in TAPS Division Two in TWCA. They're also 19th in all of TAPS against the number three team in TAPS Division Three in BAC, who's also the number 23 team overall in TAPS. And should TWCA come out on top, this would be their sixth win in the series in the 11th game, and they'd go up by a game in the series. First things first, the Warriors find a way to get this into the end zone and add to their lead. Two timeouts left for the Broncos. Johnson and Hawkins alone in the backfield. Leslie in the slot to the left side. They're looking for Leslie in the end zone. Great route, touchdown! They run a rub route on the left side, and Ryan Leslie goes to the corner. A perfect pass from Josh Johnson, who was grilled after he threw the pass, but he put it on target, and TWCA is up by 15. Yeah, great throw from Josh Johnson out in the end zone. A little crossing route there, and Leslie wide open in the corner. Bay Area Christian fans maybe wanted a little bit of offensive pass interference, but... It was clean, not a lot of contact, and Leslie was there to make the catch. Babato puts the extra point through to make it 30 to 14. That's Ryan Leslie's first touchdown catch of the season. And remember when I said there may be some worry about finding some receptions? No worries for Coach McClanahan. We talked about how Gio Awasom, Keaton Harvey's Blaze Lindsay, Jack Cole, and Blake Wiley, who had 78% of the receptions coming into tonight for TWCA, were all out for various reasons. But people picking it up, Dane LeMaster with a touchdown catch, Sebastian Briggleson out of the backfield, Cole Harris had his first catch, and then Ryan Leslie here. So a great job by the next man up mentality for the Warriors' offensive receiving floor. Yeah, and they've stuck to the run, really, which is – you know, their forte, but when they've needed to pass, they've passed, and it's worked here in the second half, and uh, a couple big plays, and, and that sort of screen play there in the end zone worked really well. And the Warriors had a chance to kind of fold and give up the momentum after that fumble on their first possession of the third quarter, but the defense stiffened, the offense regained the momentum, and they marched down and scored once, and scored again. Babato forces a fair catch inside the 10. And so now, out of the 16 quarters, the Woodlands Christian Academy has played in 2021. They've scored in 14 of them after being shut out in the second quarter. So that's a nice streak they'd like to keep alive as they go forward into the, into the season. They have one more non-district game left. They've got to travel to San Augustine in East Texas, about two and a half hours away east of Nacogdoches. And then they start district play against Fort Bend Christian Academy in two weeks. On first down, handoff, no gain for Bay Area Christian, and they're just kind of trying to run the. They're just trying to run what they know works, but not not in enough of a hurry down two scores. Oh, 
Anderson splits out wide right. Atwell is under center on second down and 10. He's going to roll right side, throw back, and his pass sails over the head of his intended receiver, Barnes, or rather Nave, but was well covered by Sean Kane from his linebacker spot, third down. Yeah, it's that throwing to his first option again. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage out here on this far side and, and never looked this way, was, was going to that pattern the whole way and just overthrew his receiver. You know, if he puts it on target to Nave, Nave has a chance to make a move and, and get some yardage, but when he had to jump for it, even if he'd have caught it, yeah. it would have been no gain. So now Nave is in the slot. Anderson splits out wide right on third down and 10. Rolling right is Atwell. Throws, trying to run the flag route, just throwing it to a spot, hoping Nave will be there, and it was well overthrown. Going to bring up fourth down and 10 with under two minutes to play in the game. So Atwell stays on the field, but he's the punter, so we're not sure if they're going to go for it or just punt it away. Fourth and ten. Might as well give it a shot. And if you're the Woodlands Christian Academy, no silly penalties on defense. Atwell under center, rolling right side, pursuit from the backside. They're going to try that play again. Nave has some room, makes a leap, and is going to be stopped short of the first down. At the 32-yard line, he gets seven, needed 10. Ball goes over on downs to TWCA. Yeah, he had a lot of work to do to get that first down and tried to make a great play and jump over the defender, but good form tackling from the Warriors defense and no chance for the first down. Fun fact, Texas high school football fans know that, they, that Texas has its own rules. They don't play by the general accepted high school football federation rules that most of the states play with. And in those broad rules, leaping a defender is an automatic penalty, but not in Texas because Texas likes to see leaps. Well, that I can appreciate it. That's why Texas football is what it is. Exactly right. So a new quarterback in there for the Woodlands Christian Academy, and it's Kai Parker, a sophomore, but he doesn't get a chance to run a play as the entire line moves and the center did not snap it. It looks like it's... It's going to be, it's actually the second team offense who's in there right now getting some snaps with the game in hand. Warriors are going to improve to 4-0. Oh. Bay Area Christian going to fall to 4-1 to the five-yard markoff. Hawkins is still in the game, and he'll get the handoff. Big breaks one tackle at 30. He wants touchdown number three, 20, 15, 10, 5. Number three with touchdown number three. Rorick Hawkins gets the hat trick. Yeah, you can see when he breaks out in that open space, he's almost uncatchable. I mean, he just runs past all the defenders. A really good focus blocking, too, by the Warriors. They just pound it through the middle. It's okay if the outside linebackers come around and pursue from the outside because we're going straight up the middle, and that's where the hole is for the touchdown. So... That's a, a nice play. The second team offensive line's in there for one play, and they score a touchdown, allow Hawkins to do it. Mabato's extra point is good to make it 38 to 14. So for the second time tonight, Rorick Hawkins takes one play to score a touchdown on a drive. The first one coming in the first half when he scored from 81 yards out. And now it's time to celebrate as the Warriors will win their home opener in 2021. Forgot to tell you how they got here. The Warriors started off with a road game in Magnolia against Legacy Prep Christian Academy and got an easy win, 62 to 13. Followed it up with a win in Fort Worth against Trinity Valley, 49 to 17. Then they had to go to Katy to face St. John the 13th. And as we said, that game was tied after three quarters, but they eventually pulled away in quarter number four, much like they're doing today. They won that game 35 to 14. This game was a nine point difference as we started the fourth quarter, but two touchdowns in the final stanza have given a comfortable cushion for the Woodlands Christian Academy and forcing Babato to kick off yet again.
Rorick Hawkins is over 100 yards with his touchdown runs alone. And that's a missile from Babato that will clear the goal line. Not even a fair catch, and it's coming out to the 25 for the Broncos with just 92 ticks remaining in the football game. Broncos have another road game next week, their second road game of the season, this being their first. They've got to go to Deweyville, Texas, and then they have their first district game after a bye week on the 15th back at home against Lutheran North, a timeout called. Second timeout called by Bay Area Christian. We'll see if, we'll see if they get some more players in now that the game is out of hand. But, but Adam, we talked about how momentum was a factor at the end of the first half. The Warriors eventually took it back, and then they they cruised to what will be a nice victory. Yeah, and they stuck with their strength, the run game, and Hawkins has really, you know, as you said, put up lots and lots of yardage in this game with big runs. And, you know, eventually the defense got tired and over-pursued, and it has really paid off here in this fourth quarter for the Warriors. So in the first four games, the... TWCA offense has scored at least 35 points in all of them. So that's impressive. And we do have another quarterback in there and a new running back as Austin Arians takes the snap and gives it to Corbin Whittington. We'll get two yards and the clock will continue to run. So some non-starters for both teams getting in there. Second team defense for the Warriors getting some snaps as well. Arians under center on second down. This time it's a hand sweep around the right side to Scott Farine. So the freshman getting some carries in this game. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Probably one more snap will do it. And coming into the game is Daniel Benkovic, the diminutive senior who is playing in at cornerback on the near side. And immediately a cheer comes up from the sideline of TWCA. On third down, tackle for loss. That's actually Cameron Hawkins who came into the game. The freshman, DB, and that's gonna do it. TWCA and its home opener for 2021 posts to victory to go to 4-0. They win it by a final score of 37 to 14. We'll be back to wrap this one up from Warrior Field in just a moment. You've been watching TWCA Warrior High School football on Vibe Sports. As the teams shake hands at the middle of the field, Warrior Nation happy with a 37 to 14 victory in their home opener for 2021. Bay Area Christian in their first true road game falls to four and one. If we had to name the star of the game just from statistics alone, it would be Rorick Hawkins with three touchdowns, starting off with an 81 yard scamper, followed by a two yard plunge after a Ryan Leslie run and then to seal the deal late in the fourth quarter with a 37-yard touchdown run. Quarterback Josh Johnson also had a touchdown pass to Ryan Leslie in the fourth quarter. And who can forget how the scoring started off? Jumbo Elijah Tokabens on fourth down and a foot, plunging into the, exit, in the end zone on his third attempt. And again, the Woodlands Christian Academy scored the first 16 points. Got away from him in, late in the second quarter and allowed a late touchdown, but grabbed the momentum after giving up a 
opening score touchdown for Bay Area Christian, and they would not allow another score. They win it by a final of 37 to 14. And Adam, this is there's a lot of teachable moments in this game for Coach Chris McClanahan and the Warriors, but he's got a lot of things to be happy about. Too. Yeah, I think you got to be feeling really positive about this this result in this game because considering the injuries we talked about and considering the mistakes and the momentum how it seemed to be switching at the beginning of that third quarter the Warriors sort of put their foot in the ground sort of held held their own and and took control of this game and pretty impressive performance That's right very resilient and it's that type of resilience that can really work for them if they can keep it up throughout the season as the Warrior faithful plant prepare to sing their alma mater I want to Thank everyone involved with this broadcast and everybody here at TWCA for their wonderful hospitality. And thanks to Jasmine Jones for working camera here in the Woodlands. And for Adam Mueller, I'm Chris Martin saying so long from the Woodlands Christian Academy as the Warriors win their home opener, beating Bay Area Christian by a final score of 37 to 14. You've been watching TWCA High School Football on Vibe Sports.